It's romantic. It's reflective. It always makes me cry. And George turned on him and said, don't ever take the piss out of my friend. And I ended up sitting next door to Peter Gabriel at dinner and I was completely <laughs> over. I was so starstruck. Virgin Radio 80s Plus. Simon Fanshawe, hello. Hello. Welcome to Virgin Radio and Virgin Radio 80s Plus. It's very smart. I'm particularly excited having you here because I worked for you on my very first radio you station. You did. You did. How old were you? I would say 21. 21. 21, 22. And I'd done bits. I've never been live on the radio until... I work for you on your radio station. I think you took a massive chance, but I hope um, I hope you're impressed with where I am now. Yeah, look at this. I mean, I think it's a great thing, actually, it's, isn't it, when you, you start something like that and then people come and work and then, you know, 20 years later or whatever, and you think, this is fantastic. It's You know, you're, yeah. everybody needs that platform. What a great time we had in Brighton. I mean, Brighton's a really special place, and I know that you, you lived there, haven't you, pretty much your whole life. I went there in 1975, so I went as a student, which is quite a common way to get to Brighton. I went to Sussex University to study law, and, yeah, and then and I just never moved. I mean, I sort of forgot to get a job, really. I remember <laughs> take, in those days, you got a gown and you took it back to a shop just below, the, if anybody knows, Brian, just below the clock towers, right in the middle of town. Yeah. And it's a Burger King now. But in those days, it was a, a sort of, a, I don't know how they made money, but anyway, they did the gowns for the, I don't know what else they did. And I took it back and I handed the guy behind the counter the gown and he said, good luck with what you're going to do. And I went, thank you, and turned around and got to the door and thought, I don't have anything to do. <laughs> I literally, I didn't have a job. I had to move out of my flat. I, I was like, oh dear. And I walked down, you go down towards the pavilion and I walked down there and I met Jackie Ford. Bless her. She said, oh, we've, we've got a spare room. Come and live in our house. And then I went to Manpower. Do you remember Manpower? And I got no. A, it was a sort of it was an employment agency and I got a temporary job at American Express. And that was it. So I literally, by the time I got to the bottom of the street, I was kind of set for the summer. And then I just never left Brighton because I just ended up being freelance. Yeah. And the most amazing thing about your life and your career is so much of what you've gone on to do was shaped from the 80s. I mean, so much happened for you in the 80s with your TV, with your stand-up comedy, with the Perrier Award at the end of the 80s. We'll get to all of that. Okay. But you okay. have given me a list of 10 amazing songs. Was it difficult to whistle it down to Well, I did, I did a really, you know, obvious thing, which I just Googled hits from the 80s. And I, <laughs> and I did start off with about 60. Yes. You, know. you sent me the original list. I was like, oh, my God, we're going to be here all day. Well, the thing, too, is that, that in a way, then, they are 10 of my favourites, but they're not my 10 favourites. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If you ask me kind of in a month's time, I'd probably come up with some others. But they each have... They do have proper memories. The 80s was an interesting and special time. Mm. I was watching um, a, a, <laughs> I was watching those two Wham! documentaries recently. Yes. And I mean, dear God, what did we think we were wearing? <laughs> you know, and it was funny. My husband is Nigerian and much younger than me. And he was really funny. I went, oh, God, look at those clothes. And he went. Oh no, they're great! <laughs> what were you doing? That must have been really fun, you know. And he saw it in the complete. Yes. He saw it for the playfulness that it that yeah. it had. Well, it's so retro. Maybe it's fabulous now. I mean, well, who I think knows? it was quite playful. I mean, there was a sort of explosion, wasn't there? I mean, one has this impression in a way that the seventies was a bit dull in Britain, and it was a a period of some decline. And to some sense, it was a sort of it was a period of stasis. I mean, there was this, you know, there were the unions and the government, and there was inflation, and it all. Nothing really sort of moved. It was, and I always think that what's interesting about the um, <clears throat> about the seventies is that everybody thinks the sixties is the important moment, but actually, the sixties was only the sixties if you lived in very particular places like London or yeah. Carnaby Street or whatever. The sixties never became real until the seventies. Mm -hmm. That was when you know those big kind of social changes really started to pick up for the rest of us, if you mm -hmm. like. And so, in some senses, the seventies is a very contradictory period but once we got to the 80s there was a kind of degree of release I think and that victory whether you're a Tory or a Thatcher lover or a Thatcher hater whatever the 79 was a release of energy whether you liked that energy or not and it was very destructive in many ways but actually personally I think in lots of ways it was a boost to people's individual freedom in some sorts of ways. So so that makes the 80s quite interesting. Let's get into your list of songs. Uh, Aha, Take On Me. 
I uh, just think it's a beautiful, beautiful song. The, the 80s song, I mean, it was pervasive and it had that great video. Do you remember the drawing? Oh, that was a game changer, wasn't it? Was it was just a beautiful, beautiful video. It was kind of video. half kind of drawn and half reality. That's right. It? And it sort of, fa- yeah, the, the drawings became sort of real. Yes. So it's like a cartoon. So, yeah, I mean, in terms of film, that sort of thing happens now the whole time. And the other thing, too, is that Morton Harkett was just gorgeous. He was so beautiful and still is so yes. beautiful. He's one of those people who, one of those men who's still a beautiful older man and yes. he was a beautiful Damn youth. him. Damn him. And he's lined <laughs> and creased and he's still very beautiful. My favourite version of it, and I don't know whether we can play this, is there's an unplugged version that they did very, very recently, which yeah. is not the 80s version. But if you can play one, that, that's great because it's so pure. He's still got that extraordinary falsetto and it's just a beautiful melody. It's, it's really pure. Somebody told me that it was meant to be called Take Me On, but because of their, you know, their, their, their language, their native tongue, they kind of got it wrong, so it became Take On Me. Oh, wow. Because I never know what the it? lyrics mean, really. They just, they sound reflective. They sound somebody who's thinking about who they are. It, it's romantic. It's reflective. It always makes me cry. It's one of those. It's just. It's just a beautiful, beautiful melody. Simon Fashion's with me. <laughs> my eighties playlist. You having fun this week? Yes. It's great to have you here. Um, can I ask you a couple of questions about that's life? How did it happen? It happened because Esther Ranson came to see me at the Edinburgh Fringe. Right. Because I'd won this thing called the Perrier Award, which is the award for comedy. So people and came. And this is huge. A huge award, isn't it? Much well, coveted. Well, it's much coveted, I suppose. It, it, it's one of those things. Yeah, I mean, I'm terrible. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I love it. You know, yeah. people still say, oh, Perrier Award winners, it's a big I'm deal. Sure. Um, And very lovely too. So I won the award. So she came and with her producer, Sean Woodward, who subsequently became a uh, Tory MP and then Labour MP and then Minister of State for Northern Ireland. Um, and she just wanted to try and change that's life. By the way, she didn't she didn't do it. I mean it, it wasn't possible to change a kind of cross generational show. So actually it wasn't a good choice. So she was trying to make it younger yeah. and more current, yeah. yeah. And it and, and, and what what I ended up doing you know, actually, my wings ended up being clipped, not deliberately by her, but actually, you couldn't change that. Um, but I'm, I'm very fond of her and have remained a great admirer of hers. Are you still in touch? Yeah, yeah, I'm How's still in she touch. Doing? And she's okay. She's okay. And um, she gave a party the other day, which I couldn't go to sadly, but the instruction was no one was to talk about her health. Right. <laughs> yeah. She's indomitable. And look, soft surface playgrounds, seatbelts in the back of cars. Childline. I mean, this is an amazing contributor to our better world. It's going to be a world. big thing when she leaves us, isn't it? A yeah. massive, a massive gap. She's also good fun. Is she? Oh, she's a hoot. Yeah. Oh, great to hear that you're friends. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. Uh, chain reaction, Diana Ross. Tell me well, about this. Well, that's just, it, it went on. Uh, you know, the DJ put it on and the entire dance floor just <laughs> filled up. You know, it's just that sort of record. And uh, for me, I'm not a I'm not a club fan. I'm not particularly a gay club fan. I never felt at ease with that. I always thought it was a bit ugly. So I didn't like it. But that sort of record, you just go on and you just dance, don't you? Simon Fanchel's with me. It's my 80s playlist. You've gone for Eurythmics. You've gone for... I mean, what a song this is. What a song. You can still hear this in a packed club on a Saturday night. It will still get one of the biggest cheers of the whole evening. They're first sort of tour when they were just breaking they came to what was then the top rank in Brighton and I can see it now I can see it now she was astonishing yeah that voice just I mean it's like it's like a beautiful piece of crystal it just cuts you know through the air years some I was chairman of war on want uh, uh, in the 80s uh, the charity and we did a the, we were part of this concert for Nelson Mandela's uh, birthday when he was still in prison and she sang at Wembley and I'll never forget that because Wembley is enormous and she stood on the center of the stage and she had such charisma it was breathtaking and then uh, we were in this box very sweetly but and then she and I ended up sitting next door to her and she's I don't know her, but my experience of her that afternoon was extraordinary because on the one level you saw her on stage, this extraordinary songbird, completely luminous. And then sitting next door to you, she was just chatting on. That's amazing, isn't it? And I just thought, how do you such do that? Presence. Such so, presence. And such a strong female And it's as a well. beautiful song. I mean, it's just such a great song. It's got a drive to it. Really glad. Some of Angel's with me. You picked George Michael on my 80s playlist and this song. I've got a million questions. You mentioned to me earlier, I think, in the lift that you'd seen the Netflix Wham! Yeah. Uh, special. What do you think of it? What do you think of him? 
I think I've always thought he was wonderful. There's a lovely story about somebody coming up to George Michael in a disco and thinking, oh, they'd be really, really clever. And he was dancing on the floor and he came up to him and he said, oh, yeah, Wham was really successful. I want to be the next Andrew Widgley. And George turned on him and said, don't ever take the piss out of my friend. And you see this extraordinary narrative now in those films, the way in which he couldn't have done it. And like he said at the final concert, I couldn't have done it without you. You know, they really were a duo and, and it was, and you know, Ridgely dressed them and, and Michael was the, was the songster. I always loved his songs just because he's a brilliant songwriter. Mm. He unbelievable. I mean, just very generous. And we all know that now. Yes. But I mean, I knew that, you know, back in the day. Because, Did you know him? Well, I, no, I met him a few times, but, but I was involved with Terence Higgins Trust. And there was the thing when he finally gave the entire royalties of Listen With, with, Listen with Prejudice. He gave the entire ro- royalties of that album to Terence Higgins Trust. And Did my, he? I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, my great friend Paul is a, was the fundraiser then and, wow. and, and had been in conversation with him. And he just did it one day. Just went, look, you might as well have that. And it was, wow. I mean, it was a million quid. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was a lot of money. He was a very, very generous man. I really liked him, but he clearly battled with fame. I mean, I wish, wish I'd known him because he sounds like a bit wild and a bit fun and a bit mad. And that, that appearance on Parkinson, and we were talking just after Michael Parkinson died, that great moment when Parkinson said, it's great to be here. And he says, yeah, it's a shame I had to get my out to do it. <laughs> <laughs> do you think he was a prisoner of his time? He would have had a much better time if he'd been big now, wouldn't he? I don't know. He would have been more accepted. He would, you get, would have been able to come out. I don't know. I don't know. I get, you get this. I don't know. Look, I don't know him and it's difficult to tell, but you get the sense that, you know, fame's such a double-edged sword for people. It's such a bitter tasting medicine for some people. Of course, it's fabulous. Of course, you're rich. Of course, everywhere you go. But if you, if you don't really want that and actually your heart's in the music, not the fame, you have to play that game. And it, it clearly was very destroying for him. I just wonder whether that would always been the case. Peter Gabriel, next track on my 80s playlist, uh, Summer Fanshaws with me. We must discuss the video first of all. Well, the video is extraordinary, again, groundbreaking. But the reason for, Clay, for, for, for Peter Gabriel is twofold. Go on. When I was at school, Genesis were in their height and he was doing that tour. They were doing that tour and I don't even remember, he used to wear this kind of peculiar light box over his head yes. and his cloak and I mean we listen to Genesis you know this is in the 70s though. I mean all those weird mad epic songs with these crazy bizarre lyrics and we were obsessed and one Saturday night we did we went away from we were at school in Wiltshire and we went to Swindon or Oxford I can't remember which and we ran away from school basically to see a Genesis gig <laughs> and we played hooky and got back really really late really and got, yeah and we got punished and everything <laughs> so Genesis for me was absolutely my schoolboy thing yeah. you know you know? And I know that these days it's thought of as a bit kind of, you know, old fashioned. I thought it was just wonderful. Great songs, you know, puffed up, very grandiose, very orchestral, but actually and actually wonderful. What I loved about it was the way he transformed himself into this entrepreneur and a world musician. Mm. And I thought the whole way in which he started to draw those strands together and promote them, I thought was amazing. And then I did I did go to, I've got an actress friend who's got a, had a house in um, in Wiltshire and I was staying there one weekend and uh, she said, oh, we're going out to dinner with these friends of mine down the road, the producers. And we went to dinner and the Guests were Dominic West and his wife and Peter Gabriel and his wife. Oh, wow. And I was, this is very rare for me, I was literally speechless for 10 minutes and I ended up sitting next door to Peter Gabriel at dinner and I was completely (laughs) over, I was so starstruck because I just think he's just such an extraordinary What was he like? Delightful. Yeah. And actually rather shy and not very forthcoming and very interesting about, you know, stuff and yeah. very approachable and nice. But I just thought, what a great musician. But it's that it's that world music. It's bringing together and giving a platform to those musicians and really, really using your star power. Mm hmm as a trampoline for other people. And back to that video, no one's managed to do anything yeah. quite like it. No. The dancing chickens, the fruit <laughs> flying around. I mean, it, it was all going on, wasn't it? It was great. And again, another great voice. I mean, that's one of the themes, I think, If you, if, of all the 10, they're all voices that the minute you hear a note of any of these people singing, you know it's them. Yeah. Whereas yeah. if you think of a lot of pop, that's not true. Mm-hmm. Simon Fanshaw's here. Have you enjoyed this week on Mighty's um, playlist? Yes. I feel like we could do another 10 songs. I've got it's so much to so ask much you. so much fun. Thank you. Um, Van Halen, Jump. <laughs> what I love about this song, and I always say this when I play it on Virgin Radio 80s Plus, is that they were really nervous about using the synthesizer. And in were fact, they? Eddie Van Halen was like, I'm not sure this is us. I'm not sure we should do this. It could be the end of us. They'd gone from that to becoming 
the greatest band probably to use the synthesizer in one of the the most pivotal rock songs of the 80s i just love it because in the end i really like rock music you know i just do yes and i find it just make it, it, the, the drive and the rhythm of it is just it i don't know why i just really love it and this is so corny and so <laughs> fabulous and so danceable too and you still want to turn it up don't you you still want to turn it... it up and you still want to be bald and have long hair you know I yeah. mean, it's just it's just touch, it's just too good a song. Simon Fanshawe, thank you so much. Can I come down to Brighton? Can we have dinner? Oh, absolutely. It'd be lovely to absolutely. catch up with you again. And we'll go to a very, very expensive restaurant and you can pay. <laughs> or I will take you to Kentucky Fried Chicken. We can have a bucket of chicken. I think I owe you a thighs. couple of dinners, to be honest. Uh, but thank you. Lovely to see you absolute again. Absolute pleasure. Thank you for spending the week with me. Lovely.